What's up, everybody? Justin here, back with a new fantasy booking video. The fantasy booking of AEW on TNT, their very first show. I'm going to fantasy book AEW's TNT first show on TNT. It's historic. It should be historic. Hopefully, it's uh, really good. Because me, personally, I'm going to pick to watch AEW Live on the first week. The second week, I'm going to watch NXT and probably go back and forth every week to pick which company to watch live. But uh, anyways, no matter what... On October 2nd, I'm watching AEW Live, their very first show on TNT. So this is my fantasy booking, as I said, for AEW's very first show on TNT. I could not book their whole damn roster because that'd be stupid. It's only a two-hour show. So I did not book everybody under contract. You just can't. If you're a booker or fantasy booking, you cannot put everybody on the damn show. Some got to be off the show. And not every title is defended either. I have uh, two title matches booked. And I, didn't, I did not book a tag title match because I, I just did not. So, uh... Up first, we got the women's AEW Women's Championship on the line. The winner will be the first ever AEW Women's Champion. Yes, I did book what AEW has booked. I stole their match, basically what they have booked. Nyla Rose against Riho. Or Rihu. Anyways, you know who she is. She's facing Nyla Rose on the... On uh, the very first TNT in the real AEW. This is fantasy booking, but I stole their match because I like the matchup. It's like David versus Goliath. It's a monster big heel. I think Nyla Rose is a heel against really tiny uh, 98 pound Riho. So Riho. Nyla Rose for the first ever AEW Women's Championship. Rihu wins. I, I don't know how to pronounce her name. I apologize. But uh, Riho wins. I put her over Nyla Rose. She's the first ever AEW Women's Champion is Riho. And then after the match, Tessa Blanchard. Tessa Blanchard currently in my opinion, I, I believe Tessa is like one of the best women's wrestlers in the world. Out of everybody, she's definitely top five. I don't, I don't know where I'd rank her. Like at least top, at least number three or four out of top five women. So uh, Tessa Blanchard comes out, the crowd pops, they're kind of shocked. Uh, she still could be with Impact, whatever, I don't care. This is fantasy booking. I would have Tessa Blanchard come out, attack the champion, beats down the champion, Riho, and attacks Nyla Rose and beats her down. Beats them both down. Then Tessa Blanchard gets a chair, puts uh, Riho in the ring. Puts a chair on her arm. Stomps on the chair. And Riho selling it. Holding her arm like she has a broken arm. So Tessa Blanchard looks great. In her AEW debut looks like a badass. That can kick ass. Takes out Nyla Rose. Takes out Riho. And Tessa Blanchard walks to the back. And gets a huge pop. Fans would probably chant, holy shit, holy shit, if Tessa Blanchard came out on the real show. So now let's go to 
Um, let's go to the eight-man tag I bought. The eight-man tag team action. Lucha Bros. And uh, Private Party. The Lucha Bros and Private Party versus the Young Bucks. And uh, Kenny Omega and Derby Allen. The Young Bucks, Derby Allen, Kenny Omega against the Lucha Bros and Private Party. I have the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, Derby Allen win the eight man tag. Up next, we have a six man tag Dustin Rhodes, Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy up against Joey Janela and the Dark Order. Dustin Rhodes, Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy win the six-man tag. Up next, I have a Cody Rhodes promo. Cody Rhodes comes out with his dog, Farrell. Please, AEW, do not put off Pyro ever again if you're going to bring out Farrell. That was really stupid because the dog, the dog was scared to death. He was scared to fucking death. You're lucky. The dog didn't piss on the stage or shit or shit himself or shit on the stage. That he was so damn scared. I'm surprised he didn't piss on the stage. So I don't know how you make that mistake. I Cody Rhodes said the uh, really loud fireworks pyro was not supposed to go off. Well, why the fuck did it go off when the dog was right there? But it was a mistake. I uh, forgive everybody. Just don't have the dog come out and make his entrance when there's pyro. So you don't got to bring him out every damn time. So, uh, yeah, Cody Rhodes comes out, does a promo, in-ring promo. He's with MJF. Then out comes uh, Sean Spears. Tully Blanchard are out on the stage. And, uh, yeah, Tully Blanchard, Sean Spears are together on the stage. Cody sees them. MJF sees them. They're uh, staring at Tully and Sean Spears. And from behind, MJF turns on Cody Rhodes. MJF turns on Cody in the ring, beats him down. Sean Spears, Tully Blanchard join him. They beat down Cody, too. Then Sean Spears, Tully Blanchard, MJF, they join forces. MJF joins Sean Spears and Tully. And they're in the ring, all standing together, and they put up the three fingers. I, I don't know. That could be their symbol for their group or something. So they put up the three fingers instead of four because Tully Blanchard, four horsemen. You, AEW, do not try to create a four horsemen with Tully and, I don't know, Tully, maybe. It could work, I guess. Tully, Sean Spears, MJF, someone else. But they attack Cody. MJF turns on Cody, and they put up the three fingers. I know that's kind of a ripoff of uh, ECW's triple threat. Shane Douglas, Bam Bam Bigelow, Chris Candido. They did this first. They did it first. They were the triple threat. And before them, it was uh, Shane Douglas in ECW. It was Shane Douglas, Chris Benoit, Dean Malenko were, the, I think, the original triple threat in ECW. And then later, 97, 98, was uh, Bam Bam Bigelow, Chris Candido, Shane Douglas. And then after that, in 99, it was Tommy Dreamer, Francine, and Shane Douglas were the new triple threat. So anyways, MJF turns on Cody. It's a big moment. Joins Sean Spears and Tully. And they put up the three fingers because they're all working together. And they're like a mini three-man faction. So now let's go to up next uh, is the main event. 
I did not book any more matches. I booked, let's see, one, two, three, four matches only. Four matches is enough for a two-hour show, plus a Cody promo. And the heel turn by MJF. And a surprise by Tessa Blanchard. She showed up. I fantasy booked. So now the main event for the AEW World, or non it's non title the AEW World Champions in the match, Chris Jericho, but it's a non-title match. Main event of the show. Main event of the first ever AEW on TNT. Chris Jericho takes on a returning. He's uh, cleared, but does he matter if he's not cleared because this is fantasy booking. Chris Jericho takes on John Moxley. In the main event of the first ever AEW on TNT, John Moxley wins, defeats the champion in a non-title match, pins him clean after the Dirty Deeds DDT. So John Moxley defeats the champion, non-title in the main event, and that would lead on to a feud between Jericho and John Moxley over the AEW world title that would go into 2020 on pay-per-view. Hope you enjoy my fantasy booking of AEW's very first show on TNT. I enjoyed fantasy booking it. I booked four matches, one promo. Again, hope you enjoyed it. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye for now.